Welcome to Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold, talking about how to take slight edges that you have in your life and turn them into a great advantage that you never thought you could have and a good news update on a little-known way to take your retirement funds, invest them in real assets, and make all of your future gains tax-free today on Get Rich Education. Finally, with Total Control Financial, get checkbook control of your existing 401k and IRA funds to invest in real estate. Yes, you can move your retirement money into your own checking account, but you must avoid the little known tax that you'll get hammered with in a self-directed IRA. Instead, start your QRP. Learn more and get your free copy of the QRP book by text messaging QRP in all capital letters to 72000. The company that's provided our listeners with more loans than anyone is Ridge Lending Group and MLS 42056. You can finance more than 10 single families up to fourplexes serving most U.S. states. Their knowledge and experience leads to your financial freedom. They're number one in the investment space. Pre-qualify and then chat with President Chaley Ridge personally. Start on your next investment property loan right now at RidgeLendingGroup.com. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Here it is. Hey, welcome to Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold, and you have an accumulative advantage over everyone when you understand principles like the velocity of money and leverage and cash flow. And this is pretty exciting. Just say that you buy a rental door and it kicks off $200 worth of cash flow to you every month. I contend that that $200 is worth more to you and is more powerful to you than it is the next person. And that is because you know how to leverage it five to one and then own $1,000 worth of property with your $200. And now you're compounding your cash flows in order to control more property. It's the same for every $200 in tax savings that you realize it can be leveraged just the same. And you're creating velocity when it's reinvested. So you're enjoying a cumulative effect. Let's look at how. When you create advantages like this, it can have a greater effect than you realize, than you ever imagined. And we need to leave real estate for a minute and get some analogies from nature as to how this builds your wealth faster than it does for others. Now, sometime in the late 1800s, nobody is quite sure exactly when, but an Italian man named Vilfredo Pareto was poking around in his garden When he made a small but pretty interesting discovery, Pareto noticed that a tiny number of pea pods in his garden produced the majority of the peas. Now, Pareto was this rather mathematical kind of guy. He worked as an economist, and one of his lasting legacies was turning economics into a science rooted in these hard numbers and facts. Unlike a lot of economists of that time, Pareto's papers and books were filled with equations And so these peas in his garden, they tended to set his mathematical brain in motion. And he thought, well, what if this unequal distribution was present in other areas of life as well, outside of just gardening? At the time, Pareto was studying wealth in various nations. So he began by analyzing the distribution of wealth in his home country of Italy And to his surprise, he discovered that approximately 80% of the land in Italy was owned by just 20% of the people. Yes, similar to the pea pods in his garden, most of the land was controlled by a minority of the players. And Pareto continued his analysis in other nations, and a pattern began to emerge. For instance, after he poured through the British income tax records, he found that approximately 30% of the population in Great Britain earned about 70% of the total income. And as he continued his research, Pareto found that the numbers were never quite the same, but the trend was remarkably consistent. The majority of rewards always seemed to accrue to a small percentage of people. 
This idea that a small number of things account for the majority of the results became known as the Pareto Principle, P-A-R-E-T-O, or more commonly the 80-20 rule. Now, there's a good chance that you've heard of the Pareto Principle before, but let's expand on it, and then let's talk more about how it can benefit you and how to think this way and get this advantage for yourself. In the decades that followed Pareto's work, his work was practically becoming gospel for economists. So once he opened the world's eyes to this idea, people started seeing it all over the place. And really, the 80-20 rule is more prevalent now than it's ever been. In fact, do you know what percent of the world population the U.S. population makes up? you have any guess? Well, it's just about 4% of the world's population that lives in the United States. Yet with just 4% of the world's population, the U.S. owns 30% of the world's wealth here in the year 2020. In the NBA, the National Basketball Association, one quarter of the franchises have won three quarters of the championships. And beyond that, just two franchises, the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers, have won almost half of all the championships in NBA history. So like Pareto's pea pods, a few teams account for the majority of the rewards, and the numbers are even more extreme in soccer. As of just a few years ago, 77 different nations have competed in the World Cup, and just three countries, Brazil, Germany, and Italy, have won 13 of the first 20 World Cup tournaments. Examples of the Pareto Principle exist in everything from real estate to income inequality to tech startups. In the 1950s, 3% of Guatemalans own 70% of the land in Guatemala. Worldwide today, about 8% of the world population controls 85% of the world's wealth. Today, Google dominates the global search engine market share with over 90% of all search queries worldwide being handled by Google. I mean, see, who would really want to voluntarily use the world's fourth best search engine When they're looking for information, why would you do that? You'd just rather use the best. Well, why do these disparities all over the place happen? Why do just a few people or a few teams or a few organizations enjoy all these massive rewards in life? And to answer this question, let's consider an example from nature. And we're going to tie this all into how you can use this to your advantage as a better investor in really every other facet of your life shortly here. And it's really about what's called the power of accumulative advantage. The Amazon rainforest is one of the most diverse ecosystems anywhere on Earth. Scientists have cataloged approximately 16,000 different tree species in the Amazon. But despite this amazing level of diversity, researchers discovered that there are only about 227 hyper-dominant tree species that make up nearly half of the rainforest. Just 1.4% of tree species account for half the trees in the Amazon. All right, well, why? How could this really happen? All right, just imagine this. Imagine two plants growing side by side, and each and every day they compete with each other for resources like sunlight and water and soil. If one plant can grow just a little bit faster than the other, then it can stretch out just a little further and it'll catch more sunlight and it will also soak up more rain. And then the next day, this additional energy that it got from the previous day allows the plant to grow even more. And this pattern, it keeps reinforcing itself and it continues until the stronger plant crowds the others out and takes the lion's share of the sunlight and the soil and the nutrients. So from this advantageous position, the winning plant has a better ability to spread seeds and reproduce as well, which then gives this species an even bigger footprint in the next generation. And this process gets repeated again and again until the plants that are only slightly better than the competition soon go on to dominate the entire forest in just this way. And scientists refer to this effect as a cumulative advantage. What begins as a small advantage 
gets bigger and bigger over time, one plant only needs a slight edge in the beginning to crowd out the competition and take over the entire forest. So then there are these winner-take-all effects, and something similar happens in your life. Just like plants in the rainforest, you're often competing for the same resources as others. In your economic life, you compete for the same dollars as others. Politicians compete for the same votes. Authors compete for the same spot at the top of the bestseller list. Athletes compete for the same gold medal. Companies compete for the same client. Television shows compete for the same hour of your attention. The difference between these options can be razor thin, but yet the winners enjoy massively outsized rewards. Imagine two women swimming in the Olympics. One of them might just be one one hundredth of a second faster than the other, but yet she will get all of the gold medal, and whoever got second place gets, say, no medal, or they're even forgotten most of the time. Ten different companies might pitch a potential client, but only one of them will actually win the project, and you only need to be a little bit better than the competition for you to secure all of the reward. Or perhaps you're applying for a new job. 200 candidates might compete for the same role, but being just slightly better, just 1% better than the other candidates, that earns you the entire position in these situations where small differences in performance lead to outsized rewards, are really what we call winner-take-all effects. And they typically occur in situations that involve relative comparison, where your performance relative to those around you is the determining factor in your success. And not everything in life is a winner-take-all competition, but so many are. And some of them have limited resources that you're competing for. So in situations like these, being just a little bit better than the competition leads to those outsized rewards because the winner does take it all. You only win by one second or by one dollar at an auction or to buy a property, but yet you capture 100% of that victory. The advantage of being a little bit better is not a little bit more reward. It is the entire reward. The winner gets one and the rest gets zero. These winner-take-all effects in individual competitions can really lead to winner-take-most effects in your larger game of life that you're playing. And now, from your advantageous position with your gold medal in hand or with your cash-flowing property, now you begin the process of accumulating advantages that make it easier for you to win the next time around. See, the Olympic medalist gets all of the commercial endorsements. What began as a small margin is starting to trend toward the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. See, if taking one road is only slightly more convenient than the other, then more people travel down it and more businesses are likely to build alongside it. And that's where the more valuable real estate is going to be. As more businesses are built, now people have additional reasons for using the road, and so that road gets even more traffic, and well, soon you end up with a saying like, 20% of the roads receive 80% of the traffic. Let's look at capitalism. If one business has a technology that is just a little more innovative than the other, then more people will buy their products, and as the business makes more money, that means that that business can invest in additional technology and pay the higher salaries, and therefore lower and higher the better people. And by the time the competition catches up, there are other reasons for customers to just stick with that first business because customers are already used to that ecosystem. And soon one company dominates the industry. And this is why what they call in this day and age the FANG businesses, why they're so dominant and why they're so difficult to topple. FANG is F-A-A-N-G, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. If one author hits the bestseller list, well, then publishers are going to be more interested in their next book. And then when their next book comes out, the publisher will put more resources and more marketing power behind it, which makes it easier to hit the bestseller list for a second time. And soon you begin to understand why a few books sell millions of copies 
While the majority struggle to even sell 1,000 copies, the margin between you being good and you being great is narrower than what it seems, and that's the good news here. What begins as a slight edge of you over your competition compounds with each additional contest. Winning one competition, one property, improves your odds of winning the next. Each additional cycle further cements the status of those at the top because now you've got more experience and now you've got more cash flow from that property so you can buy your next one. And over time, if you're slightly better, you can end up with the majority of the rewards and those that are slightly worse end up with almost nothing. And this idea is sometimes referred to as the Matthew effect. And this references a passage in the Bible that says, for all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what little they do have is going to be taken away. So small differences in performance can lead to very unequal distributions when repeated time after time after time. And this is yet another reason why your wealth mindset is so important. If you do the right things more consistently, then you're more likely to maintain a slight edge and accumulate disproportionate rewards over time because you've got that belief system embedded in you. You only need to be slightly better than your competition, but if you keep maintaining that slight edge today and tomorrow and the day after that, you can repeat that process of winning by just a little bit over and over again. And thanks to these winner-take-all effects, each win delivers outsized rewards. And we can really call this the 1% rule. The 1% rule, that means that over time, the majority of the rewards in a given field will accumulate to the people and the teams and the organizations that maintain a 1% advantage over the alternatives. So the good news for you here is that you don't need to be twice as good to get twice the results. A lot of places in life, you just need to be slightly better. The 1% rule says you really only need to be 1% better to rule your respective field or industry. And that's why the process of accumulative advantage is really the hidden engine underneath that drives this 80-20 rule. That's what's under the hood. Think about places that you can apply this in all the areas of your life, investing and beyond. Now, let's use a wealth mindset and real estate investment example that's concrete and actionable for you. When you understand something that we've talked about here a lot in the past, like the return from home equity is always zero, you're more likely to benefit from the Pareto principle, a cumulative advantage, and build wealth for yourself. Because look, when you don't make an extra dollar or principal pay down in your home, or you take cash out of your home, which transfers your equity to cash, you understand that you can leverage your cash five to one when you make a 20% down payment on an investment property. Now, I've got a question for you. Which would you rather have, $100 in cash or $100 in property equity? Which one? Well, if you've been a listener here for a while, I think you know definitively. So let's reinforce this notion of the Pareto principle and a cumulative advantage with this video from our Get Rich Education YouTube channel. It's less than two minutes in length, and I'll be right back to comment. Here's $100. How would you rather take possession of it? As cash or in the form of home equity? Let's compare the two right now. Hi, I'm Keith Weinhold, Forbes writer and host of the Get Rich Education podcast. If you take your $100 as cash, you can do whatever you want with it. You can buy dinner, you can pay to fix your cracked phone screen, or maybe you can invest it for a 10% return. If instead you took this $100 as home equity in a principal paydown form, well, that does not improve your life whatsoever. In fact, with most loan types, your mortgage payment won't even be reduced the next month one bit. If you make an extra $100 mortgage principal payment to the bank, basically here is what you're telling the bank. Hey, Mr. Banker, here's an extra $100. Don't pay me any interest on it. If I need it back, I'll pay you fees, 
plus I'll try to prove to you that I qualify again. Now that is in a best case scenario. What about a worst case scenario? If you have an emergency or you lose your job, you're going to need cash, not home equity. And if you lose your job, your bank sure won't let you get your equity back out either. They're definitely not going to give you a new loan if you find yourself in that condition. Cash is liquid. Home equity is illiquid. It's trapped and its rate of return is always zero as we've discussed elsewhere. Compared to home equity, cash is king. Yeah, with extra principal pay down, you have in fact lost leverage. And like I say, leverage builds well faster than compound interest. That's where you're finding that slight edge. Because look, if you've only got two to one leverage in your home where you live, that's 50% equity. And you've got say zero income property as well as that two to one leverage home that you live in. Well, let's say that you wanna do something about that. You learn about and apply the concept of leverage and the velocity of money. So what you do is a cash out refi from those funds from your home, and then you put those funds into investment property. Well, now afterwards, you simultaneously have 20% equity in your home and 20% equity in three rental properties. So beforehand, you had two to one leverage on your own home and no rental properties. Afterward, you had five to one leverage on four properties, your home and three rental properties. This right here is a cumulative advantage. This is how 20% of the people can have 80% of the wealth. So really you need to ask yourself, hey, which side do I wanna be on in life? The 20% or the 80%? And you know, see, someone might say, oh, well, this is all unfair. Life is unfair. Yeah, life is unfair. And since life is unfair and it's always going to be and you can't change it, well, then what do you do? What you do is you make life unfair to your advantage. That is the bottom line. So to review what we've learned here, the Pareto principle is also known as the 80-20 rule, where 20% of the people receive 80% of the benefits. And it's driven by this notion of a cumulative advantage. I want to thank the book, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson for inspiring some of this material, as well as an article in Business Insider. Of course, resources like this are in the show notes for you. Coming up in the next few weeks on the show here, Chris Martinson joins us to discuss how the Fed affects your inflation rate and the interest rate that you pay. We're going to talk about the latest on how to qualify for rental property loans. We're going to talk about the importance of home inspections. Also, why would a turnkey provider choose to sell a home? to an investor like you instead of an owner-occupant. And a brand new guest that I think you're really going to like is going to help you see the future of the economy and so many more great shows coming up. Speaking of making life unfair to your advantage, how do you take your retirement funds, get control of them so that you can invest in exactly what you want to, even leveraged real estate, and make all of your future gains tax-free, even the leveraged portion? These are tax advantages that you're probably missing out on if you only have a 401k or an IRA. Even Roth IRAs don't give you this accumulative advantage. And there are changes to this little known vehicle for this year that make it even better for you. In fact, you can even make these benefits retroactive to last year if it's still before you file your taxes this year. That's next. You're listening to Get Rich Education. Since 2014, the powerful Get Rich Education podcast has created more passive income for people than nearly any other show in the world. This show teaches you how to earn strong returns from passive real estate investing in the best markets without losing your time being a flipper or landlord. Show host Keith Weinhold writes for both Forbes and Rich Dad Advisors and delivers a new show every week. Since 2014, there's been millions of listener downloads in 188 world nations. He has A-list show guests include top-selling personal finance author Robert Kiyosaki. Get Rich Education can be heard on every podcast platform, plus it has its own dedicated Apple and Android listener phone apps. Build wealth on the go with the Get Rich Education podcast. Sign up now for the Get Rich Education podcast or visit GetRichEducation.com. Countless property investors get killed with maintenance costs, but that's far less likely when you buy brand new construction. Let me tell you about JWB Real Estate Capital in Jacksonville, Florida. 
They pioneered the build-to-rent model where you can invest in new construction, turnkey rental properties. That's why JWB was featured on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. To learn more and see inventory, go to newconstructionturnkey.com. This is author Jim Rickards. Listen to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold and don't quit your daydream. I'd like to welcome onto the show a friend of Get Rich Education. He's a robust entrepreneur, an expert in real asset investing like real estate and precious metals, and he's authored a number of really well-received best-selling books in those spaces and elsewhere. He's even a fifth-degree black belt. He's an expert in helping you get control of your retirement funds and making all of its future gains tax-free. Welcome to Get Rich Education, Damian Lupo. Keith, it's so good to be back, man. Damien, you say some people from unpleasant $200,000 tax bills, I know that, and you're doing it with EQRPs. That stands for Enhanced Qualified Retirement Plans. Before we talk about some of the tax changes that affect QRPs this year, let's discuss just what a QRP or an EQRP is. It's a vehicle that gives you checkbook control of your IRA, a lot like a self-directed IRA does. And this way, investors can put those funds into things like residential property, metals, cryptocurrency, options, tax liens, notes, vacant land, mobile home parks, and a lot of other things. The thing is, is that with self-directed IRAs, one must pay a tax on their leverage gains. And with EQRPs, you don't. So tell us about that and the nasty tax that you avoid with EQRPs that IRAs don't save you from. It's crazy because this thing called UBIT, the unrelated business income tax, yeah. is sitting there and people are literally sitting on like a landmine. They're holding a grenade with a pin out and they don't realize that it's a live grenade. And basically this tax happens if you've got leveraged real estate, like you know, multifamily or you bought a house and you got some, maybe a private loan and that, that's in your IRA. You don't realize you, you're sitting on a, a ticking time bomb until you probably when you sell it. And then all of a sudden you get this tax and it can be like 35 to 37% of the gains. I mean, Gosh. that's a dream. And they don't tell you because there's no real reason that they have to. And so, and I'm talking about IRA custodians because they're not advisors. They just literally tell you, here's the form you have to fill out and then give it to your accountant. And then your accountant says, here's your $200,000 tax bill, which was about what was going to happen to our client that had a bunch of property in their IRA, their self-directed IRA. And when they found out about the EQRP, they said, can we fix this? And we said, yeah, we can roll it over. It's where you roll the asset. You move the asset from the IRA into the EQRP. And at that point, it's exempt. So they were able to sell the assets and all that money came back to their account and no tax, literally zero because it's exempt. You've been a savior to some people. So let's just clarify before we go ahead and give an example. UBIT, that happens when any type of IRA invests in something with debt. And IRAs, even Roth IRAs, self-directed IRAs, they don't protect you from this UBIT. For example, a self-directed IRA in a real estate syndication would be subject to UBIT. That's it. It doesn't matter whether it's a deferred IRA or a Roth IRA. All IRAs are subject to this. And all EQRP accounts, whether they're deferred or Roth, are exempt. So it's literally black and white. There is a clear distinction. One, you get taxed and one, you don't get taxed. And there are some tax and legal changes that affect this. For one, there are now tax credits up to a greater threshold. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is a huge thing. I, in, in December, literally like on a Friday night, it's kind of how t- Congress does things, right? At the stroke of midnight, it's <laughs> witching hour or something. And they changed the retirement system. Mostly it had to do with annuities and getting the insurance companies to be able to sell more annuities to people in their 401ks. There were some other things that happened, biggest tax changes for that retirement space in 13 years. And one of them was the tax credit. So if you've got some employees, whether you've got one employee or 20 employees and you want to set up a plan, they changed the tax credits. This is not a tax deduction. This is like a tax credit. So like if you owe the government $1,000 and you get a tax credit, It's literally like they just wipe off the thousand. This is substantially better than a deduction. It's huge. It's way better. You know, and so it used to be that you're setting up a qualified plan, any type of qualified retirement plan, you could get up to a $1,500 credit. Now it's $15,000. It's 10 times better. So it really encourages people to do it. 
And the EQRP is the only type that's available in the marketplace where you have employees, you can get the credits, and you can do alternative assets investing. Everything else is, you're really kind of stuck. Like solos don't get this. Um, This is not a credit that's available for them. Solo 401ks, it's only for EQRPs with the employees. And that was one of the huge changes. Not the biggest, but it was one of the big ones. One of the other ones is that the EQRP enables you to pay your kids and get a tax deduction on your income. Tell us about that. This is a really cool thing. When Congress a couple of years ago did the Tax Reform Act, they changed the tax brackets. So now the, the lowest tax bracket is zero to $12,200. And if you pay your kid $12,200 and they're under 18, they're not going to pay social security taxes. And now they have this income. So you get the write-off, you pay the 12200 to them. They did some work for you. They don't pay taxes of any type. And that 12200 could either be in an account and just sitting there, no tax, and you got the deduction. Or what I like even better is that 12200 could go right into an EQRP and a Roth EQRP. Uh, that. So you've got some really cool options. Your kids are probably doing some work, you know, unless they just play video games, but then you, maybe you can do something, you know, take some pictures of them playing video games. Yeah, they'd be atypical if they were doing anything else. If your kids are, are <laughs> capable of doing something, you've got a way to reduce your tax burden you know, by, by 12200 per kid per year. This is a big deal. Because here's the reason that this is a big deal. When you put money into a Roth EQRP, you can pull that money out at any time. So let's say you put the 12200 in there and then 10 years down the road, kids going off to college for some reason. And you want to say, okay, oh, that money's going to go for college. You can literally pull out the 120000 you contributed tax-free, penalty-free. So it's a really cool way to grow it, get a deduction today and use the tax code. for It's kind of like found money. Now, people are beginning to soon prepare their taxes for the previous tax year, and one can go ahead and make this activity such that it's retroactive and they can capture some of these benefits for the previous tax year. Tell us about that. Huge, huge change. It used to be that once December 31st at midnight happened, you were stuck. Meaning, let's say you go, oh, I wanted to have a retirement plan and I wanted to deduct 50,000 or 100,000 you're stuck. You can't set up a plan for the previous year. That changed with this legislation. The new legislation made it so that at any point up to the time that you file your tax return, so we're in 2020, and up to the time you file all the way until like September, October, if you're doing an extension, we can set up a retirement plan, an EQRP, retroactive for 2019, and then you can contribute. If you're sitting there going, oh, I just realized after I got all my numbers in that I have a tax problem, like I I made too much money. And you go, what am I supposed to do? I can't do anything. I can't go back in time. You can go back in time now because the law changed. Here's a really big thing that a lot of people don't realize is the uh, Tax Reform Act two years ago made it so that let's say you're a company, your little company, an LLC, if you make 157500 as an individual or less, you get a 20% deduction right off of that. It's just one of those things. If you make more than 157, then you're phased out of it. But let's say you made 200 grand. And you go, ah, I phased out. I can't take the 20%. Yeah, Yeah. because we can literally set up a retirement plan. You can fund it with $50,000, knock your income down from 200 to 150. And at that point, you get to take 20% off again. You're getting another deduction. So your income went from say 200 down to 120. And it's just like free money. And it's because we're able to do this retroactively now. Let's give another example. So we're talking about someone, if maybe they feel like they made too much money flipping houses last year, and now they have a big Schedule C income. And Schedule C, by the way, is just the part of your tax return that shows the income or loss from your business. How could that help that person? If somebody has a Schedule C, so one of the things they can do, it, you know, the kids, all the work they did for their kids, make sure your kids got paid that 12200 they could also say, okay, well, I've got this income on my Schedule C. Because Schedule C income is eligible to contribute to an EQRP. You could take up to $57,000 per person. So let's say you have a couple. You could literally have both parties kicking this in. I mean, you could have over 100000 that's pulled off of that Schedule C income that goes into a retirement plan. And all you're doing is, is taking that money and sheltering it, potentially never paying taxes. And that's another conversation down the road, maybe with Tom Wheelwright or one of the other great experts in the tax world. Yeah. But the way to get your money so you're not paying taxes, you move it into a retirement plan, and then down the road, you literally convert it to Roth and not pay taxes when you do it. That's an amazing tool that Tom and I have been talking a lot about, and it's a really cool way to never pay taxes on that income. Making it, earning it, converting it, pulling it out, never. 
Now, another benefit with using the EQRP is part-time employees and the requirement to cover them. Tell us about that. So one of the changes was they, the government wanted to include more people. So what they said is, well, it used to be that part-time employees were not really, we just forgot about them. And now if you have a, a part-time employee that works 500 hours a year, that's only 10 hours a week, super part-time. They're going to start to be required to be a part of your plan. So a lot of people have solo 401k type of plans. Right. Those plans will not work with this if you've got part-time people that are working 10 hours or more a week. So the EQRP solves this problem because the EQRP covers employees. It's a huge difference and it was meant to include more people, but what it's going to do, it's going to wreck a lot of the solo plans that are out there because they're now people have a lot of part-time employees that do work for them. Guess what? They're now going to mess up your solo plan. It's not so solo when you have employees that are required to be covered. So with all these benefits to the EQRP, you know, I've got to ask, who do you think the EQRP is not for? Who would it not benefit? Somebody that is in love with mutual funds, yeah. this is probably not the thing for them because there's other things that are a lot simpler. This is for somebody that wants to be actively engaged in their money and uh, somebody that's, that really thinks that real assets are a better plan than handing money over to Wall Street and hoping it works out. Like smoking the hopium, Keith, is just not what EQRP clients are all about. Indeed. Damien's been an expert at administering these plans for people and really substantially changing a lot of people's lives financially. Damien, if someone wants to learn more about the EQRP, what's the best way for them to do that? Simplest thing to do is grab your phone and type the word QRP, all caps, and send that message to the number 72,000. And you'll get a, an updated 2020 report on the EQRP and the retirement stuff. And there's also a way, if you want, you can get a copy of the new edition of the QRP book. So just type in QRP, all caps, send it to 72,000, and we'll get that stuff over to you literally in a matter of seconds. Be sure to do that if you think that Damien and the EQRP can help you. Damien Lupo, it's been great having you back on the show. Always great to be here. Thanks, Keith. Great timely material from Damien as usual. After we've done our learning, I like to leave you with something actionable. And if you think this can benefit you, you at least owe it to yourself to learn more. With your phone, simply type QRP in all capital letters and text it to 72000. I'm Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.